What's going on guys, it's Gino here, and today I wanted to take a look at the 16-inch MacBook Pro. I personally got this laptop about a year and a half ago, and I've definitely spent thousands of hours of video editing, watching YouTube videos and podcasts and editing pictures and all of that kind of stuff, and I've done just about everything you can name of on this MacBook Pro. So I've experienced probably all of the positives and negatives anyone could possibly have with this device. But the question that I really wanted to answer in today's video is who is the 16 inch MacBook Pro really for? And should you wait for the new 16 inch or 14 inch MacBook Pro to be released from Apple? And what should you do? Well, let's go ahead and find out in the video. All right guys, so first off, I just wanna share my personal experience with this laptop. And to be honest, ever since I got it back in 2019, it was late 2019 when I got this device, it has really increased my workflow. I used to have like a super old computer that wasn't very good and I couldn't do hardly anything on it. And then I went from that to this thing. And this thing has been like buttery smooth with everything I've ever done. I can run editing programs like Final Cut and Adobe Premiere and all that kind of stuff, even at the same time. And it's just a really useful device to have around because it saves me so much time. I can't tell you how beneficial it is to have my video editing program up and then maybe if I wanna edit a picture at the same time, I can do that. And then I can jump on Google if I'm researching something for a video. And I can do all of that at the same time while all of these programs are running. And it's just a really nice laptop to have around. But unfortunately, it is now the oldest MacBook that is on Apple's website on their lineup, along with the older 13 inch MacBook Pro. That's not the M1 MacBook Pro. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But the 16 inch and the 13 inch MacBook Pro with the Intel processors are the oldest MacBooks on Apple's lineup right now. And the reason I'm saying this is because I believe that you're gonna wanna hold off on purchasing a MacBook until the new 16 inch MacBook Pro comes out with the M1 chip and the 14 inch MacBook Pro, it's supposed to be a 14 inch that is going to be released alongside the 16 inch with the new M1 chip as well. And if you're not familiar with the new M1 chip in these laptops, Apple is calling it Apple Silicone. And pretty much what it is, is just a new chip that allows the computer or the laptop to run more efficiently. They already have the M1 chip in the MacBook Air, which was the first MacBook to have the M1 chip and it significantly increased its speed and overall made the MacBook Air a much more effective laptop. I just wanna go over all of the MacBooks available right now because it can be kind of confusing if you're not aware. Currently, the M1 MacBooks that Apple has on their website is the MacBook Air, just the regular MacBook Air with the M1 chip, and then they have the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip, and they also have a 13-inch MacBook Pro with the Intel chip, and then they have the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I have right here with the Intel chip as well. Now, the difference between these is Apple still hasn't put their M1 chip in any of their most powerful Macs yet. And the reason for this is because they're still working on it to work along with the M1 chip so that it can be as effective as possible. So that's kind of what we are all waiting for here is for Apple to put these M1 chips in their most powerful devices. And that's why everyone, including myself, is super excited for the new 16-inch M1 chip MacBook Pro and the new 14-inch M1 chip MacBook Pro that's supposedly going to be released within the next couple of months here. And along with the faster performance with the M1 chips, these laptops will also have better machine learning performance. If you're not familiar with machine learning, it's pretty much the laptops recognizing patterns and giving you more accurate data. So for example, in some cases, it may help certain organizations or businesses see what product might be more profitable in the future or vice versa. And like I said, the most powerful MacBooks in the market right now with the most RAM and storage don't have the M1 chip. And that includes this device right here, which I have and I've been personally using for quite some time now, about a year and a half. And there's been all kinds of rumors with these new devices with the new M1 chip that are supposed to be released which includes the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And essentially they're supposedly, according to the rumors, going to get a slightly better design with the more, instead of 
a more curved design like we see here. It's supposed to be more of a straight edge design like the iPhone 12 Pro. And I actually like that straight design a little bit better. So it'll be interesting to see how that kind of looks on a MacBook Pro if that really is what Apple is planning on doing. Um, the screen is supposed to be just a little bit different. We may actually get some additional ports, which would be really cool. Like, I don't know, even an HDMI port for connecting the TVs or monitors and that kind of stuff. And a MagSafe port. And I don't think we are going to get an HDMI. That's kind of high hopes there. But I think we might see the MagSafe charging port, which will be an interesting option if Apple decides to bring that back. And that's pretty much why I'm saying that if you want one of the most powerful laptops, then you're probably going to want to wait until these new M1 MacBook Pros are released. And they may even have a slightly updated version of the M1 chip that is going to be called the MX1 chip or even the M2 chip. So we'll see what Apple decides to do. But some of you watching this are probably wondering what you should do right now if you don't want to wait for the new MacBooks within the next couple of months. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what I personally think you should do. And here's the deal. If you are a creator, like a YouTuber, or you're a photographer, or you are a videographer, and you have all kinds of 4K video, or you're a programmer with all kinds of different programs that are on your computer at once, and you need all of the most RAM and storage possible, then the 16 inch MacBook Pro is still an incredible device, even though it does have that Intel chip, it still works incredibly well, and I'm going to be using it myself for many years to come. It is still the most powerful MacBook in the market, and it does start at $2,400, and there is a ton of different upgrades you can do to it up to I believe eight terabytes which is insane and also a bunch of RAM as well but be more realistic here the majority of you watching this probably aren't going to maximize the full potential of these MacBook Pros like the 16 inch that I have here that's like really upgraded and all that kind of stuff and you're probably better off going with the MacBook Air with the new M1 chip but that being said, if you're kind of in the middle between the MacBook Air and the 16-inch MacBook Pro, you could get the MacBook Pro 13-inch with the M1 chip. And it's not a whole lot different than the MacBook Air, to be honest. You'll only have some of the Pro features like the touch bar, a slightly different design, and that kind of stuff. And it is $300 more than the MacBook Air, so I don't think it's completely worth it to me. The MacBook Air is $999, and then the MacBook Pro 13-inch is $1,299. And again, the only difference is the MacBook Pro 13-inch with the M1 chip has a slightly better GPU with an 8 GPU performance, and the MacBook Air has a 7 GPU performance, and then the touch bar and a couple other things, but that's pretty much just about it. For an extra $300, it's probably not worth it. And my eyes overall are definitely on the MacBook Air with the M1 chip because that's the best option for the majority of people. But again, if you do need a laptop right now, you are a programmer or you are a video editor and you just need a ton of power, no matter what you do, if you need a ton of power, then the 16 inch MacBook Pro is still the most powerful MacBook that you can get available today. And like I've said many times, it is an incredible device. And kind of wrapping up the video guys, I know this was kind of a short one, but overall I just wanted to share my experience with the 16 inch MacBook Pro and how much time it has really saved me with doing my e-commerce stuff. I, I have an e-commerce business and I also do some YouTube stuff as you guys are seeing right here. But uh, yeah, it's just a great laptop and for anyone that is worried to get an Intel based laptop from Apple instead of an M1 chip, it is still a great option. That being said, I am super pumped to see what Apple is going to release with their 16 inch MacBook Pro and their 14 inch MacBook Pro and exactly what kind of design they decide to go with and what kind of ports we have and all of that kind of stuff. Of course, if you guys want to check out any of the laptops that I mentioned in this video, like the MacBook Air with the M1 chip, or the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the Intel chip, or any of them at all, I'll link them down below in the description, and I'll also have a simple explanation next to each link that will say what I think is the best laptop for each person, so you guys can check that out. But with all of that being said, I really appreciate all of you guys watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!